Okay. So we can definitely build something from scratch and it will you know, uh, take some time. So I also opened some already built stuff. Um, so this is the entry page. I think it's very much similar to all the other platforms. What's maybe like some cool feature, which I think we are only one having it is this like a brush tool. If you open it, uh, you have this like cool canvas, uh, environment, which is, uh, which is, uh, supported or it's made by TL draw, which is a very cool company. And what you can do here is actually you can, you can either, you know, sketch some prototype if you want, or you can upload images here and use it as a mood board, or you can even generate AI images, which I will do right now. We can create some presentational website for, let's say, let's say for kindergarten. So create logo or named, uh, press. yeah, let's generate it. And do you think that for example, image will be kind of a better approach than just a, a simple prompt or, or how do you compare it with the prompt text? Yeah. What's interesting is that if you generate this image, it influenced the design a lot. So we are here, we are using this like open AI GPT image, which is, I would say currently the best model. It creates a, like a really nice illustrations, but it's kind of slow, but as you can see, it generate, like, I, I think for this, for this use case, it's perfect. It's made for kids. So you can have this, let's say logo, and then I could also select this image and generate from this selection, like how the website could look like just to get some inspiration, create, um, Website, use this logo. It's for Kinder. Because also, I noticed some that some of the web coders are that uh, using Figma or like Pinterest designs and then they actually upload it. So, yeah, yeah it's much better. But also, I, I have seen some, some people they take the image and then they generate AI, like kind of images, you know, from that and like kind of prompting, okay, just do this, do this. So, in the end, you are fine tuning it a lot. And then you just get, you know, the final one after five or six versions. And then kind of like you push that to your app and then it will look very native type of thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, my experience is that when you uh, like use this, uh, these images you usually get like uh, more, it's not that a generic kind of a website. So as you can see, it created, a, let's say, logo and then how the website could look like. Right now I can, uh, select the first image and export it to the, to the chat. And I will export separately the second image as well. And when I close it, you can see that right now it's here in the chat and the agent has uh, access to these images. So what I can say here is that create a website for a kindergarten, use the first image as, as a logo and get inspired by the second image, second image, uh, create just the home page for now. And yes, just like that, I can run it. And right now we can, we can discuss something we have, like, I would say two to five minutes until it's done. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, I was like wondering, because at some moment, you know, when I heard, like when I heard of Corsair, you know, it was very interesting moment everyone was like wow you can actually know i just asked chat and then it generates code so it was okay wow moment and then we saw lovable coming up so i like it and so many others so my question is that is building a vibe coding startup infrastructurally hard or is it just you know an ai agent which you just link the api and then it's just like the foundation model does the work and then you just have the the kind of the layer uh, on the front part you can definitely make it hard if you want to but you can also use a lot of different already pre-built pieces and just connect it together basically when i'm not like obviously the llm is like crucial part which you need to just use for these kind of you know vibe coding tools but then what's also very important is to have some sort of infrastructure when you can run, where you can run the code. And there are like, um, few different startups. We are actually using E2B, but they are also from, from Prague, Czech Republic. And for our use case is it's perfect. So when LLM is, you know, creating these files, we are uh, uh, like running them inside this like safe sandbox and technically we are using Next.js. So for example, when you compare it with Lovable, they, uh, their default template is a wheat React, 
which is like nice that it's quite fast. But on the other hand, I saw many people try to build some like content based websites, but it's in lovable. Everything is in JavaScript. So it's not very usable for Google for SEO, but with next, you can actually have both of those things. So it's really good for Google and SEO. You can also have your backend insights next.js so it can connect to the database and you know any other services like resend for sending emails those kind of stuff so can you just like walk, like walk us through what happened in the background and then also yeah it was quite fast i didn't expect that uh so at the beginning it basically think about some design inspiration what colors to use and when i uh, designed a prompt uh, i see that this is very important to generate like nice designs so when this like lm is talking about you know what type of fonts to use what would be like inspiration for this kind of kind of website it usually leads to much better designs from my testing. Then, as I said, we are using two calls. So these multiple actions means that it's reading files. We are starting from some like empty template. So it needs to read the files. It knows what's there. This is very much similar to how Cursor works. And then it's using different type of tools for, you know, replacing files. So it it's creating those, these like sections one by one. We can see hero section programs, stuff like that. Then we can see here that it runs, it runs the type checking. So that's very important. So the type checking like gives us the context if the code is actually correct. And we, if not, the LLM gets this context and it can auto fix it. We will, we will do the same thing for CSS because sometimes the LLMs is you know, making errors in a CSS as well. So this, this, it's, it's this tool call. And the last one is actually pinged to this sandbox itself. So it knows that it's actually running. And at the end, it's just the, you know, summary of what it built. So when we can, if we see it, we can see that when I open this canvas again, it get inspired a lot. So it used this logo. It created this nice like shape here. It's talking about some programs. We have some testimonials and that's like pretty much a simple web page. Uh, you can check if it's optimized for phones. Yeah, it seems like it's fine. So yeah, so, and from this, you can obviously continue. Uh, we have pretty much the similar features. Like if you want to change some section and you want LM to focus, you can use this edit tool to, I don't know, click here and say add another item to navigation. And from here, what we can do, we can actually like publish the website with just one click so we can we can actually try it and yeah so that's like a really much simple demo we talked about the database is it possible to kind of connect the, the like register with a simple database so that we can see how simple it is to kind yeah. of do that uh, yeah, actually database, uh, we don't have, we are building this for three months now and we don't have this like super base button. I also said, we don't want to necessarily know people to know what's super base. So right now we don't have like super seamless connection to database that's on our roadmap. So, uh, right now, if you want to connect it with the database, you would need to have some, you know, account somewhere like you could use pretty much, um, uh, Everything to use, yeah, you know, Superbase or, you know, SQLite or even uh, MongoDB. That's still fine, but you need to do it yourself. Uh, just in terms of uh, publish, publish it here, and it's available on this on this domain, and it's possible to change the domain here. But in terms of database, I would I would continue like like I'm a developer, so I know what to what to write here, but. Yeah. When I think if there would be a non non developer, I think it's like these people would need some sort of like a recipe or something like how to do it. For example, I would continue like I need a database, please install Prisma and we gonna use SQLite. So I would, for example, use this, but you know, as I said, I know what to use. So that's like unfair advantage. Because for example, for, for non developers or like people who use vibe coding, now, I think kind of like simply what they want is just to build something simple or like, like something complicated and then just make money with it. So like they don't want to, you know, actually deal with, 
you know, spending days on to like build something, but so they just like want to build fast, ship it fast and then earn money. And then if it doesn't work, you know, just go to the next idea and then build something else. So I think this is kind of the new era of building that you see lots of micro apps or micro SaaS coming up every day by this uh, vibe coders. Yeah, definitely. I think also all, all of these platforms are pretty much like we are waiting for, you know, always uh, better models. So currently it can build, you know, okay, uh, you know, marketing pages, small SaaS apps, but most of these platforms are not suitable for, you know, larger apps. Like when you open anything slightly larger, it's not pretty much working, but that's something I hope will change in the future. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure if it's like six months or, you know, two years, but I think it already started just a year ago. We, we probably didn't expect that this, this would be possible with, with like all of these like nice designs. And I, I don't need to necessarily have special designer for that. So it's moving super fast. So I have a couple of different, like already built websites. For example, my, uh, my favorite use case is to actually use Macalif as a presentational software for creating slides, because I kind of hate creating slides, but with Macalif or I guess any other web coding tool, it's quite fun because you can just say what you want to present. So this is my like favorite party trick when I showing this. I'm actually doing most of the time some sort of full screen and at the end, I always show the UI and say it was all built in, in Macaulay. It was interesting to see the first slide that how to pronounce Macaulay, you know, <laughs> that was also my question. Yeah. That was actually more like a joke for Czech guys. Yeah. Uh, just maybe for the podcast, like Macaulay in Czech meaning is like to work hard. So that's, that's just the. Uh, the reason why I, uh, explain it. Okay. Some other, yeah, that's also a lovely use case. We are opening our, you know, marketing website inside Macaulay. So for example, we just changed our pricing a couple of days ago and with Macaulay, like it's a pretty easy change. And then, uh, I'm actually, I have connected this project to, to, to the GitHub. So I just sent a pull request there and it's super easy to mark it. But also like a common problem that I hear from no coders or kind of like people who use these tools is that sometimes the longer you chat with a tool, let's say with Macaulay, then uh, at some point, you know, the Macaulay is becoming confused, you know, and then actually it's going to do things, you know, which you don't want to do it. So, and then people say that, okay, it's better to restart a new chat, you know, just so that it's like fresh. It doesn't have lots of memory. So, how do you, you know, kind of handle this confusion of the tool with, with lots of prompt and chats and all these things? I generally agree that let's say after some implemented feature, it's usually better to create a new chat, but we cannot, you know, count with this because these some developers don't know it. Like, I think, I think that's pretty challenging, like how to do it when someone would have still the one chat and already sent hundreds of messages. We are currently changing it, but we are not doing something like overly com com complex. What, what we are doing is that these like answers from assistant or from Macaulay, they are usually quite long because there is a, a lot of code and stuff. And just a very simple thing to do is to like, just summarize what the Macaulay did. So I'm all, always think about it. Like when I would read it, uh, when you would print it on a paper, what happened, you should understand it. If you understand it, there is a high chance that LLM will understand it. Yeah. I think this summarization like helps a lot, but it's not necessarily infinitely scalable. Then what you could do, like there is so much, like so, so many ideas, like how to solve it, but I, I guess there would be also some, something from the providers itself, because everyone is trying to solve this. And when everyone is trying to solve something, usually the providers come and they will say, Hey, do it this way, or, or they will have some new API similar to open AI where you don't need to solve it at, at all. Yeah. So for example, this, this demo just show that you can also have, you know, some API, this one is connected to open it. So when I say something here, hello there, it should just like respond. <laughs> so, 
And that's like, because it's using like our Next.js. So Next.js is also like server side framework. So I think it's more flexible than just wheat. Thank you so much, Peter, for such a nice demo. No problem.